episode 265. Hey, what are we talking about today? This is day five of Podmas, as you guys probably already know. And we're talking about the big topic is principles of minimalism and the DIY rockstar. Today's episode is specifically about decluttering. Yes. And I know we've touched on it before, but we're going to give you some actual principles that hopefully will help you be able to declutter your home, your studio, your workspace. Yes. So as DIY rock stars, you want to stay in that mental framework of being ready to create. And to me, this is helpful to all of that. Yes. 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 Yeah. So I know for me, for the studio, yeah. I like to have everything that's in the studio hooked up and ready to go. Oh, I like that. So that all, you know, all I have to do is plug into it. So whether it's pedals, whatever it might be, I have it hooked up and ready to go. Ready to go. Um, I, I don't have a situation where now I got to go into a pedal drawer or I got to go oh, and grab yeah. this pedal from this other place or something like that. It's too difficult for me to do that. Yeah, you know, not I mean, when you're in the mode of creating. Yeah, yeah. it's like, to me, it, it's that extra step and I don't want to have to take that extra step. And you, you know? also do a cleanup before you even get started. I know, I've noticed yeah. that, that you kind of come in and you say, okay, I'm, I'm in the mood to get ready to do something. When you're in that that, yeah. that kind of in between space, and yeah. you will come and clean. But yeah, I mean, but for me now, it's like the studio is more set up where it's ready to go like that anyway. Yeah. So now I don't have to even worry about that as much, mm -hmm. you know, because everything is set up, everything's already in the board, everything's been routed, mm -hmm. and you know, so that you know, when I come down and I'm ready to do something. You know, all I got to do is start turning stuff on. Okay. You know, like turning this on, do this, do that. That's the same thing. If I want to mic, uh, you know, an amp, run through an amp, I, you know, the that mic is already hooked up to the board. All I got to do is just, you know, you know, route it virtually mm -hmm. and I'm good to go. I like that. So, so minimalism as in not having a whole bunch of steps to follow. And we're kind of like that with the um, with the YouTube studio. Yeah. Because we kind of have the set always up. Originally, we were taking it up and down and then that became a barrier. Yeah. To getting started. Um, but in order for declutter for your space, uh, we use kind of that Marie Kondo method that was so popular probably, what, a couple years ago? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's if it doesn't bring you joy, throw it out. Yeah. So sometimes there are things that are perfectly good, as in they work, they work, they're, you know, sometimes brand new. But if you've never really, if you're not getting joy out of it, and I'll, I'll say that about our juicer. We used to have a, um, yeah, okay. a juicer, and yeah. I actually had a friend who mentioned that she was going to buy a juicer, and we had only used our juicer a couple times, yeah. and it had been sitting there for years. Yeah. And so, you know, I wiped it off, cleaned it up, put it back in the box, and there it goes. Yeah. And I have not looked back since. So it's like things like that. That's easy to do. And it made space for things that I actually do use. Or instead of having cabinets that are full and when you go to reach for something, a whole bunch of stuff is falling out. Yeah. That was one thing that we were able to get rid of and bring joy to somebody else. Yeah, that's the same way I, I feel about gear. It's like if I, you know, if I if I get gear, you know, I normally get rid of gear because sometimes it's, it's tough to, you know, get past that learning curve. Mm -hmm. You know, I again, you know, if the idea is that you're going into your studio to create, then you don't want any barriers. At least I don't want barriers on creativity. So, yeah. you know, the minimal amount of gear that I have that I have to kind of figure out, okay, how to use it, how to do this, how to do that, it works better for me, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to have something. Or, like, if you're into sound design, I know for me, too, I like to get keyboards that have knobs. Okay. So that I can just turn knobs you know, aimlessly and come up with something, you know, come up with something that can inspire me because I, I don't want to have to go through like, you know, tons of menus to try to figure out how to do this. No, I, I want things that's got something in front of me where I can say, well, what does this not do? Right. And turn that knob and, and do happens. that. See what happens okay. with that. See what happens with this now. Oh, I got me something. Yeah. Now I can just go ahead and move on. Yeah. I don't want to have to go through, at least for me, yeah. trying to remember what menu has this or what menu right. has that? And oh, I, wow. I, I don't want to have to do that. Yeah. So the more things that I have that kind of operate that way, yeah. the better it is it for simplifies. me. I don't have like tons of software instruments and stuff like that. And that's the reason why is that I don't want to have to every time have to go back and say, oh, you know, I, how, do, how does this one work? Or what does this or one do? A lot Whatever. of times what you'll do is actually record 
if you're using the MIDI whatever sound or whatever, yeah. and you'll actually record that onto a track. Then that way, if you come back to the song, you don't have to worry about what was that setting. Or yeah, what I, was I don't that. have to yeah. do that. Either. Yeah. And, and then it's like that's the other part. You want to have keyboards that you know work easy as far as saving sounds. Yeah. So you know if if you can just go to something that says okay, you want to say. Okay, hit save, yeah. name it this, and be done with so it. So easier you know? to work with gear. So over the years, you figured out some gear that actually makes that process simple. Yeah, okay. you want to have that. And so, I, you know, I found that, you know, gear that has touch screens on it, that has these types of things where I can intuitively go through them, mm -hmm. work better for me. Yeah. And so that's kind of the stuff that I stick with. I like that. So you decluttering know. that mental space. Yes. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of things. Um, buy less but better. Yeah. And that goes for me for black boots because, you know, I, I have a plethora of black boots. And you start realizing, I start realizing that when I was going to buy another pair, it's like unless they're a better version, yeah. there's no point. So, yeah. but buying a better version is better than me buying the cheap version, trying to save money. Right. And then they fall apart. I love them to death, but they're falling apart, so I got to throw them out anyway. Right. So buying a nicer uh, boot it, that lasts longer, then that way I don't have, I don't feel tempted by a lot of the cheaper ones because yeah. it, it, so actually spending more, but getting more value out of it. Yeah. Even though, you know, that, that actually is a principle of minimalism that I keep running across. And I'm like, I'm really into that. So yeah. so yeah. So if you are um, interested in learning more about how our journey for principles of minimalism and the DIY Rockstar is unfolding, make sure you subscribe. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with what are we talking about tomorrow? Some financial uh, financial spend less tips for yeah. that incorporate minimalism in the DIY Rockstar. If you dig the vibe and you want to be a part of the tribe, be sure to subscribe. We're wishing you love, peace, mm -hmm. and chicken grease. Thanks.